Well, hey guys, welcome back to Wasting Time in the Woods. Today, we are talking about how to find beautiful, free, dispersed camping spots from the comfort of home. What is dispersed camping? Well, it's kind of like campground camping, except instead of this view, you get this one. In this video, I'll show you how to find beautiful and isolated spots from home. We'll look at the different public lands that are accessible and the various rules that govern their use for recreation. We'll go through the software tools, web resources, and techniques I use to find spots like this. Now, if you're too busy to watch this video, I totally understand. Maybe you can just keep camping with these guys. Maybe they can help you pitch your tent. All right, guys, before I get started, I want to thank Expedition Essentials for sponsoring this video. Expedition Essentials is your trusted off-road and overland outfitter, providing a whole range of bespoke mounting solutions for comms, tablets, and more. And you're going to need all that stuff when you drag your family down 75 miles of blown out fire roads to the world's sweetest campsite. They make a range of vehicle specific dash mounting options so you can cleanly, wait, I said cleanly, that's better. So you can cleanly add radios, phones, iPads, and everything else it takes to navigate to beautiful and remote places outdoors. They make the mount that I'm using in our GX 460, so please check them out. You'd be glad you did. All right, guys, I love camping. And one of the things that I love most about it is the sense of solitude and adventure. But it's hard to get that sense of adventure when you're in a campground sitting on a concrete table listening to a bathroom door slam every 15 minutes. That's where dispersed camping comes in. Dispersed camping just means camping outside of a developed campground. We tend to disperse camp in national forests, but people disperse camp in all sorts of places. Welcome to Camping with Steve. We're gonna camp in a culvert tonight. The problem is that, well, there's a whole world out there and most of the places that the dart hits might not be the best place to set up shop with the family for the weekend. Hey girls, get your sleeping bags. We're going to Salton Sea National Refuse Pond. The hell is that? You'll want to focus your search on public lands that are approved for recreation, and there is a lot of it. About half of the Western US is public federal lands, and a lot of it's open for recreation. About two thirds of the public land in the West is split between the Forest Service in the form of National Forests and the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. BLM land tends to be a lot of the desert landscapes, but you can camp on BLM land anytime, anywhere for up to 14 days in one spot. You can stay there so long because a lot of it looks like this. And some of it has a lot of this stuff laying around. There's also some really amazing areas managed by BLM. They manage national monuments, nature preserves, and other undeveloped places that could make an amazing crowd-free experience. And there are a ton of overlanding routes that go through wildlife preserves managed by BLM. It's also a great place to look in winter since most of it is at lower elevations. National forests tend to be the higher elevations and come with trees and shade. We're from Phoenix and we've probably seen enough desert for one lifetime, so we tend to stick to the forests when we get away, but we do run the occasional BLM trail in the winter, like where my GX went into check engine limp mode last year near the Mexican border. National forests have a ton of resources. There's usually field offices, some of which have water refilling, and it's pretty easy to get somebody on the phone to ask about the latest conditions. Blackstaff Ranger District, how may I help you? Hey, I am uh, headed up to the Kachina Peaks area uh, this weekend. I just had a few questions, if you got a minute. Sure, I can definitely help you out with that. What is your question? They also have fairly comprehensive websites designed when Bill Gates was the CEO of Microsoft. Our favorite local forest, Coconino National Forest, covers about 2 million acres, including large parts of Arizona's Mogollon River. It's our favorite because it's only a couple hours away and it's full of pine forests and little hidden meadows. Camping on the edge of a meadow means that we can leave the dogs and the kids off leash without worrying too much. The rules for dispersed camping can vary depending on what national forest you're in, so you'll need to check with the specific forest and field office that you're headed to for their specific regulations. But in general, most national forests are pretty welcoming to dispersed campers. In Coconino, you can camp almost anywhere there is a road, and in some designated areas, you can drive off the road up to 300 feet and still be legal. Seriously, a football field. You can drive your truck off the road, into the woods, a football field, and still be legal. Now, Coconino is on the more permissive side. Some are a lot more restrictive. 
Make sure that you check with the Forest Service's website for the restrictions in the specific area that you're headed to. To identify a good dispersed spot ahead of time, you'll need three things. You'll need an idea of where you're going, an accurate off-road trail map, and some sort of satellite imagery like you can get from Google Maps, or even better, Gaia GPS, or even better than better, Gaia GPS or the premium membership. I think that was stupid. I don't I'm gonna rewrite that. Gaia has become the standard for off-road navigation because it has so many different map layers. You can use it on the web or on a tablet or even a phone, and best of all, it's free. To use it offline on the trail or to combine map layers, you'll need a premium membership. But even the free version will work for finding campsites from home. And at around 40 bucks a year, I think it's well worth it to just go for the premium version. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can uh, check it out on your own. All right, now let's take a look at how I use Gaia to find campsites at one of my favorite areas. Mm, let me grab my iPad here. I probably start by looking at Gaia's satellite with topo map. That would give me roads and topo info, as well as pretty pictures from space. Then I would come in here and I would add the motor vehicle use map, which you can see are these little snaky looking lines. It might be easier if I turn down the topo roads. Now this is the official motor vehicle use map in the area. What is the motor vehicle use map? Well, it's the National Forest map that shows which roads are still in use and which ones you're allowed to drive on. It's also the only thing stopping your kids from skull bashing you from their booster seats if you drag them through Friday night traffic and down 20 miles of forest roads only to end up staring at a locked gate in the dark. Now, if you don't have a Gaia Premium membership, you can always use the Gaia base layer, which is a pretty good topple map with roads, and then you can get the MVMUs digitally from your local national forest. Coconino publishes one. Not every forest does publish one, but if there is one available, make sure that you get it. The nice thing about Gaia Premium is that they've gathered all these free and paid maps for you all together in one spot, and you can kind of cross-reference and re you know refer to one or the other. Now, whatever you do, don't rely solely on the Gaia topo base layer for your roads. It's full, completely full of old 4x4 roads that are either overgrown or don't exist anymore, and some of them even have one of these at the end of them. Wait, sorry, I meant one of these. Now back on the map, I can see that there's a ton of promising little meadows around this area. This one right here is actually one of our favorite. There's actually nothing calling out this spot at all on the National uh, Forest website. I just kind of stumbled across it using this exact same process. But this is one of the coolest places to camp in Coconino National Forest. Here's some shots of my kids and dog frolicking in the meadow. But it's essentially a private meadow. And then you have another private meadow right around the corner that you can walk to. It's just a beautiful, pristine little meadow at the end of a high clearance 4x4 road. And there's a few people back there from time to time, but not that many people know about it. It's one of the sweetest places to camp in Coconino. And I found it using this exact same method. Just cruise and satellite data, looking for areas that overlay next to a road. I'm probably ruining it for everybody who goes there by telling you guys about it, but it's worth it. All right, so let's take a look at another example. If I wanted to camp, uh, say I wanted to camp with a view, like uh, an escarpment zone or a cliff, I would turn on the satellite with topo and crank up the uh, resolution on, or crank up the transparency on it, and then just kind of look around for different cliffy areas. Now with the satellite with top of you, you can see just immediately where the cliffs are because of how close these lines are. So you can start thinking that, you know, if you're on the edge of a cliff and there's not another mountain right in front of you, oh wow, you might have a really cool view, right? So this actually is an area that I've been to before. I love this little meadow, and it's about an eighth of a mile back from this really cool cliff on the Mogollon Rim. Now, once I found my spot, what I can do is add, I'm gonna add Google Earth over here, side by side. With Google Earth, you can see down to the fire pit level. It's a handy way to look around the area for established camping spots. It's also a great way to preview that epic view that you just found when you're trying to convince your family why they should drive through the night on Friday to get a good start on that three-day weekend you're about to ruin. 
All right, so once you've got them open side by side, what I like to do is just kind of drop a pin of where I'm going, and then you can see the latitude and longitude. That's in Gaia. Now I'm gonna switch over to Google Earth here, and unfortunately, I actually have to type in the latitude and longitude because you can't copy and paste that anywhere that I found anyways. Maybe you guys can help me out and, and help me figure that out. But here it is on Google Earth. So you can see, I mean, we can get way down here and say, you know, is there an established camp spot? Is there a bunch of camp spots in the area? If we see, you know, a bunch of motorhome roofs in there, probably not our spot, right? Probably too high of use of an area. But if I come down here, let me get rid of this. So you can see on Gaia, the road actually comes down right to the edge of the cliff. And if we follow that, oh, there's the road right there. So I'm gonna make Google Earth a little bit bigger. You can kind of see the road in there. And as we get around, we can see, oh, there's a circle right there. That's probably an established camp spot right on the edge of a cliff. Now we can get in here and go, oh, hey, that's gonna be our view, right? So there's our camp spot, right? Oh, let me try and get it there. There's a little meadow that we could camp on if we weren't comfortable camping at the end of the road. But if you see this little road comes all the way down here, all the way to the edge of this just immense valley. It goes all the way back down. I mean, it's like 100 miles across. So anyways, that's how I combine Google Earth and uh, Gaia to kind of preview the different uh, areas before we get there. With the desktop version, you can even preview the sun path and figure out the best places for shades throughout the year. All right, that's pretty much my whole process. Sometimes I use a little bit more Google Earth. Sometimes I use, um, you know, go back and forth a little bit more. And sometimes I just stick to Gaia, depending on if it's an area I've been to quite a bit. But before you drag your family off into the bush, you're gonna wanna check a few more boxes. Start by going to the National Forest website and making sure that there aren't any fires in the area or new road closures. Now you're also gonna to wanna to figure out the weather for the exact location that you're going to. Just type in the nearest town doesn't really do you much good if you're on a cliff 2,000 feet above and 15 degrees cooler than that town. I use the National Weather Service website, which allows you to click where you're going to go on the map and it'll develop a specific forecast for that small area anywhere in the country. Now you can't plug in latitude and longitude, so you have to get to the general area first by typing in the zip code or finding the closest town, but then you can kind of scroll around, click the map, and it will update to that location. Well, that's pretty much my entire process for finding dispersed campsites from home. I usually pick two or three sites uh, in advance, and that way, if I get there and one's occupied, I've got a backup going so that I can just redirect to plan B. Now, I might do a video specifically on Gaia down the road, but there's a ton of overview videos and resources on that already to get you started. All right, guys, if you have tips on finding great spots from home, drop a comment in the description below. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, and share while you're down there. We'll see you out there.